Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Mr. Tie-Dye and today we're going to be doing a tie-dye baseball. So what I've got here is a tank top that's been soaked in soda ash. It's been spun out so it's barely damp and I've centered it. So what I'm going to do is draw a half of a circle on here for the baseball and this is going to be a two uh, two-part die or whatever. We're going to tie it up and dye it one time and then we're going to tie it up and add some detail to it. So to start with I marked out where I want the center of my baseball to be. So what I'm going to do now I marked out a couple of lines here whether I wanted a four inch or a five inch baseball. So I'm going to line up on the five inch ball here and I'm going to draw my half circle. and then we're going to get this folded up. Now the reason that I do a, a two-parter on this, once I get this folded up, it's hard to get these other lines on here. I'm just going to draw them on so you can see what I'm talking about. So this here would be the baseball line, the stitches. So now when I've done the baseball bigger, I did it you know, probably 12 inches, I was able to fold this all at one time and when I stitched this, I can do it all at one time. But what we're going to I'm going to show you is how to do it in two different die sessions. So the first die session is going to be just the the white circle. So what we're going to do is just accordion fold this up. I'm just going to quickly go along, gather these lines nice and straight here. So the the stitches is this red line here. Now like I say, when I've done this bigger, I was able to go in here and do these little accordion folds. But this is so small, and let's zoom in so you can get a better view of that. This is so small that I can't get nice pleats in there on this line right here because it's so tiny. So we're just going to go ahead and tie this up and leave this area white as we dye the rest of the t-shirt. So what I'm going to do is just kind of wrap this up nice and tight with the kite string. So I pull that tight. You could also tie this with sinew. So I'm just tying it tight just to try to make sure that this doesn't want to soak up any dye. Okay, now we're going to lay this back out flat. I'll zoom back out so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm just basically centering the t-shirt back out, laying it out flat, or the tank top. And I have the baseball now poking up straight from the... There you go, you can see that. That's poking straight up. What I do is I'll kind of pull the t-shirt out of all these little creases here. You just want to make sure you don't pull out any of the, the folds. So watch your, your tie line right here when you're doing your pulling. But I like to just get as much of the t-shirt back out as I can all the way up to this line. And then I'll go ahead and center that back on the t-shirt. And then what I'm going to do is twist this. And this, what this is going to do is put a spiral line around the baseball. So I go ahead and just pinch the baseball and use that as my center point for tying the rest of the t-shirt. And I've done this on a football and I recently just did this on a the Girl Scout trefoil. So this is just a fun way if you have just a small design that you can spiral around it. If it takes up too much of the shirt where it's going out on the edges here, then you can't really get a decent spiral going on there. But especially for baseballs and footballs, it's nice to have that spiral because it just looks like it's in motion then.
Okay, so now that I have this tied up, what I'm going to do is soak this with some thickened water. And what this is going to do is discourage dye from wanting to spread up into this white area here. If this here is wet, then the dye isn't going to want to try to squeeze up in there. So I like to wet that down nicely. And then the other thing you can do is wrap this up in a plastic bag or saran wrap or something. But I'm not going to do that right now. So we're going to get some dye and gloves out here in a minute. But first I'm going to just draw some lines. I usually will start the dyeing process on the back side of the t-shirt. Because that way then I can just hold that right between my fingers get this whole side dyed and then we can lay it down and dye the top. So I'll be right back with some gloves and dye. Okay now it's time to put some color on this thing. So what I'm going to do is put a couple strips of green in, a couple strips of blue, and then I think I'll do a black and a gray. Okay, and just for fun, we're going to swap the colors around a little bit. Okay, so on the back side, I put uh, turquoise in these two spots and green in these two. So I'm going to reverse those now, just to mix it up a little bit. So I'm going to put uh, green in the turquoise spots and vice versa. Okay, oh and the one other thing I forgot to do here, I always like to outline my designs with the thick black dye. So what I'm going to do is just put a strip of that right along here. and use my cuticle pusher to squeeze that in. This might spread a little bit because I saturated that with water. Oh, let me get my hand clean here. <laughs> okay. Got too much dye on my hands now. Alright, so now the other side here. So I'm just kind of using my finger to, to brace this with. So that when I push down, I'm pushing down onto my finger. Okay. And let's just add a little bit more right at the base here. So now there is the, the first die on the baseball tee, then we'll come back, uh, I'm going to let this batch for 48 hours, I'm going to wash it, and then I'm going to dip the tip here in soda ash, I mean I'll open this all the way up, but I'll come back and do another video and show you how I finish out this baseball. So stay tuned, you will see it in seconds where I'm going to have to wait 48 hours. Okay, so I've gone ahead and washed the tea out after the first dye job. So we have our spiral around our white circle. And then we're going to add our red lines in there. And <clears throat> there are a couple ways that you can do it. You can spray this with soda ash. I keep it in a spray bottle. Just spray that to get that wet. And then I would let it dry. And then you can draw your lines on. Uh, with a washable marker and then paint them with thick dye and I'll put a link to that down in the, the bottom 
or the other way that you can do that. And if you're going to do the painting, I would make sure to put something in between so that the dye doesn't soak down to the bottom, the back of the t-shirt. Uh, but what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and spray this with soda ash just to get it wet. And the other way you can do it is just to take this and dunk it into a bucket. But the main thing is you want to get that wet with soda ash and then figure out where you want your lines at. I'm going to have mine just go a little bit at a, an angle here. So I'm going to fold this up and what I'm doing is folding this directly in half so I'm just holding this up to the light so I can see and make sure that I have it directly in half. Once you have that then you lay that down and you can draw it on by hand or you can use something else and I'm just using a, a protractor because it's got a nice round edge on it and it's pretty close to the right size that I need here. So I'm going to draw just a little line where my red stitches would be on the baseball. And the other thing, you want to make sure you draw that same line on the back side. So I can kind of see it through the shirt here, but if you need to, you can lift this up to a window or something where you can see through it or if you have a light board. So once you have that done, then you're just going to do little accordion folds just like we did with the original baseball. This time we're going to fold just this line here for the stitches. So and I just do little tiny accordion folds because this is not one that we're going to tie. I'm going to use a a clamp instead to hold this in place. So I'm just doing little tiny stitches which is going to mean there's more folds which is going to put more stitches onto the baseball here. So once I have that tied up then I'm going to add, I just got some of these folder clips. I'm just going to clip that on there. And that's going to help hold it tight. Put one on the other side of the line and this is just going to help hold that nice and tight because we don't want a whole lot of dye to go down into here because we do want it to look like stitches. So let me zoom in so you can see just what I got going on here. We can get it in there. So yeah, so the purple line is right here in the middle of the space. And if we flip that over a little bit, we can see we have the same purple line back there. So what I'm going to do is let me get some dye in a bottle here and get this back in screen. Okay, so if you have thick dye, you can just paint that or squirt that on there a little bit. I don't happen to have thick red dye made up, but I do have just some regular liquid dye. So I just poured a little bit into a cap here and then I'm just going to use a paintbrush and just paint right along those lines. And this here is just going to put just a little bit of red dye on there, not enough to soak all the way in because you're not going for a solid line. You want more a line that looks like stitches. So I put that on the, the front side and now we'll lift this up and I'm holding that just to make sure nothing flops over and we're going to put the same lines here on this back side. And using a, a paint brush is just going to help make sure that you're putting just a little bit of dye on there. Okay, and now I'm going to set this aside and let this batch, like I say, there's only just that little red line that's the only thing dyed, but it still needs to batch. So we're going to set this aside for another 24, 48 hours, and then I'll wash it out and have the results for you. Thank you for watching.